Hey guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Siobhan and I'm a first year medical student studying at King's College London. I also make YouTube videos on medical school and university. If you're new to my channel, be sure to stick around to the end of the video and to consider subscribing if you enjoy the video, if you find it helpful and if you like the rest of my content. So in today's video, I'm going to tell you the basic guidelines on how to get into medical school. I'm going to help you with everything that's there along the way and I'm going to outline the entire procedure, what works, what doesn't work, what you need to do, all of that. So without any further ado, let's get right into the video. So let's uh, start off by breaking this video up into many different parts of the process. We have IGCSE or GCSEs, we have A-levels and IB, then we have, uh, we have entrance exams, the UCAT and the BMAT, then we have work experience and volunteering, your personal statement, and then your interviews, and we'll tie it all up at the end. Be sure to check out the description for the timestamps to these different parts of the video. So let's begin with GCSEs and IGCSE. So this is whatever you study in uh, 9th and 10th grade or year 10 and year 11. And basically your GCSEs or IGCSE or whatever you study makes up a large part of your application. Especially important if you take GCSEs and IGCSE because then extra weight is just given to this part of your application. So you want to look at the guidelines for uh, what the requirements are if you're not doing GCSEs slash IGCSE. Uh, they might be slightly different depending on what qualification you've, uh, you've sat for these exams. But I'll talk about GCSE and IGCSE first. If you're doing GCSEs, then you need a majority of A's and A stars or that's 9's, 8's and 7's with the new GCSE grading system. You also need um, a minimum of 6 subjects at a minimum grade of 7 or A. Even if you have only 8 subjects and 5 is a majority, that's still not enough 7's or uh, A's. Then you need to have a minimum grade of 6 or B in uh, math, English and the sciences as well. So that makes up your A-level, uh, your GCSE, IGCSE requirement. Getting through this part of the uh, process is fairly simple because um, this is all you should have your, on your plate at this point. In year 10 and year 11 or 9th and 10th grade, you should be mainly focused on doing well in your exams and IGCSE, GCSE, whatever it is, because you don't have other parts of the application process on your plate. Some universities give more weightage to this part of your application versus other universities don't. So I'll give you an example. For example, Imperial gives a lot more weightage to your BMAT and other parts of your application than your GCSEs. So a very good BMAT score can make up for uh, slightly low GCSE grades. However, in a school like UCL, the same is unlikely because a lot of weightage is given to your GCSE. So if you have a poor performance in your GCSEs, it's difficult to make up for this through other parts of your application. So you want to look into this further by maybe going on the student room and talking to other applicants and seeing how universities consider their application and what they think worked for them and what did. The next part of your application your A-levels, IB, whatever you're studying in your final years in school, 11th and 12th grade or your 12th and your 13th, 6th form. Uh, so basically you have minimum requirements for, for whatever you're studying here as well. So first of all, the subject requirements are you have to take chemistry. If you're doing A-levels and if you're doing IB, you have to take chemistry at the higher level. And I'm sure that subject requirement exists for whatever qualification you're taking. You also have to take a second uh, subject that's math or science. So you can take math, physics, biology. But overall, I think the most beneficial one to study if you're doing medicine is biology. Um, and you have to take a second one of these in your A-levels or as a higher level subject in IB. You have minimum grade requirements as well. So the grade requirements vary from AAA 
at uh, A star AA and they are A star A star A only for Cambridge. To translate that into IV talk, that is uh, varying from 666 to 766 and it, uh, the offer is usually 776 for Cambridge. And these qualifications, they, they you can go on the university medical school websites and you can translate them into whatever qualification you're studying if it's not A-levels or IT. You have to meet these minimum, these minimum, these minimum, minimum requirements in your predicted dates to get interview calls and for pre-interview selection and uh, you're getting your offer and afterwards you're given a conditional offer based on your grades and that conditional offer has to be met in your final exams for you to get accepted into the medical school so uh, usually you might want to at least meet if not exceed these minimum re minimum requirements but if you're an international student it's highly likely that you'll have to exceed them by quite a margin but the conditional offer is usually set at whatever the minimum requirements are and for IB there's usually an overall minimum requirement as well that is usually again varying from 32 to 40. 41 points basically your a levels and IB is something that you have to stay consistent with throughout your application process because it's something that's always there on your plate and you definitely want to focus on it a lot more when you are not that busy with other things you will get gaps or times where you know other things are not the primary concern on your uh, plate at that point for example, you'll have some time, you'll have a lot of time in your 12th or 11th grade where you would have not started your various aspects of your application process. So then you should really be focusing on A-levels, IB, setting up a good foundation. And then after giving your interviews again, you don't have anything else on your plate. You should put everything into IB, A-levels, whatever you're studying and uh, you should be consistent with it in the period, in that period between as well uh, and balance it well with everything else you have to do. Right, so the next step, your entrance exams. So there are two entrance exams, there's the UCAT and there's the BMAT. So the BMAT is the biomedical admissions test, it's a science-based test, it's a knowledge-based test. Um, and it's based on GC, knowledge of GCSE, math and science and there's an essay component to it as well. Uh, the BMAT is used by very few universities, like around five, six, maybe a few more. Whereas the UCAT on the other hand is a reasoning based test and it has a situational judgment section as well, which is something related to ethics and there's uh, and it's what is used by the majority of universities in the uk i think there are around 27 or maybe more universities that use the ucat now so both these exams are very important uh like i said one is knowledge based one is reasoning based so to develop an acqu acquired skill you have to practice over a long period of time versus the bmat may require more condensed revision so over a shorter period of time, giving more time to it every day versus the UCAT, you need to give it a little time every day over a long period of time. I have not taken the BMAT, so I can't give you great advice on the BMAT. So I'll link a video somewhere up here where someone who has taken the BMAT is talking about how to study for it and how to do well in the BMAT. Following that, I can talk about the UCAT because that was one of the success stories in my application. So I will link a video somewhere up here about UCAT preparation. You know what? I'm gonna link my entire UCAT playlist somewhere up here. So check out those videos if you're considering taking the UCAT. It'll tell you a lot about how to prepare, what to prepare, tips, tricks, strategies, everything. I'll just say that your entrance exam is probably what's given the most weightage in pre-interview selection by most universities, most medical schools. There's some medical schools that don't, but many medical schools will give very high weightage to your UCAT score, to your BMAT score, because it's a really good standardized way of comparing everyone who's applying to, this, uh, to the medical school who are all coming from different educational backgrounds. Also, I'll tell you that the UCAT is taken somewhere between July and October, whereas the BMAT is taken around uh, 
August. There's one date in August for the BNAT and there's one in November. And if you're an Oxbridge applicant, you will be taking the one in November. Now I'll talk about work experience and volunteering. What is work experience? Work experience is any experience you get or any exposure you get to a professional healthcare setting. It uh, it's usually involves something like shadowing a doctor or a team of doctors in a clinic or a hospital. However, anything that's partially related to healthcare or remotely related to healthcare will suffice as long as you take away what you need to take away from it. And that's a developed understanding of medicine and the demands of the job as well as the skills that are required. Volunteering on the other hand is any sort of work in a caring environment. Uh, you can volunteer with uh, in an old age home, or care home. Um, you can volunteer for charitable organizations, anything like that. Anywhere where you have to demonstrate empathy and you develop important skills like compassion and communication. So these are definitely important requirements, work experience and volunteering. They not only help you in your personal understanding for preparing you for what's to come with medicine, but also they will help enhance your personal statement as well as your interview answers and skills. Then we move on to the personal statement. The personal statement, essential, very important part of your application. You can't submit your UCAS application to your medical school without writing your personal statement. It has to be under 4,000 characters. That's around 650 words. So you have to be very concise and it has to be very to the point targeted and it also has to be example based because uh, that will really show a lot of substance and you should definitely have a structure to it because uh, structure will make it much easier to understand. And then again, I will link some my personal statement playlist somewhere up here where I talk about my personal statement and general tips that I would give to someone who wants to write their personal statement in the best way possible. And then moving on, uh, after you submit your UCAS application with your personal statement, with your grades, with your UCAT slash BMAT score, you will start getting interview calls or you start getting rejections, hopefully not, but you'll get one of the two. So you'll start hearing back from universities and you, the interview now becomes the deciding factor in your application because once you get called for an interview, the interview is all that matters. Everyone is put at a level ground as soon as they reach the interview. Everyone is at the same level as soon as they reach the interview. So uh, you need to perform well here. So basically the interview can be of two types. You have the MMIs and you have the panel interviews. So MMIs are a station-based interviewing system where uh, you go to between five to nine stations and each station has a different interviewer and tests a different topic or uh, is a discussion about a different topic and it can range from anything from work experience, why you want to study medicine, why you want to study at a particular medical school, ethics, role plays, uh, they, it can be numerical skills, data analysis, it can be a uh, practical communication station, it can be uh, so many things I can't even cover everything. So you need to prepare for all of that. A panel interview has slightly similar content but the format is that there are two panel interviewers sitting across from you and they ask you questions just like what you would expect from a regular interview but the practical aspects and the practical testing is eliminated from there and it's usually just a discussion on things you can talk about. They don't actually test skills in that way. To prepare for your interviews, the main tip I would give you is practice speaking. Practice speaking out your answers. Practice in an environment where someone's asking you the questions and you're answering to them. That'll uh, not only make you more It'll make you sound more natural and less hesitant, but it'll also allow you to formulate and structure answers in a way that doesn't sound rehearsed and it just sounds natural. And I will also, like everything else, link a, a video about interviews somewhere up here. So definitely do go check that out. And finally, be, once you give your interview, now you're just waiting to hear back from the university on whether you have been 
accepted with an offer, a conditional offer, if you or whether you have been rejected from the university. So that time of hearing back can be very anxious, but that's okay. It takes time. Remember that uh, the time frame it takes you to hear back does not indicate whether uh, it's a positive outcome or a negative outcome. So it's just a time where you have to forget about everything. Here you need to focus on your A-levels, IB, whatever final exams you're taking to perform the best you can in them so that if you get a conditional offer, when you get a conditional offer, you can meet that offer and you can get accepted into medical school and that is the end of the journey of applying to medical school and getting into medical school and uh, it's I, I, I'll say it's a very grueling process but it's so worth it once you reach here because at the end of the day it's what you want to do and it prepares you so well for what's to come it makes you more resilient it makes you a better communicator and it's funny it's ironic in a way seeing how good you are but because of that you become a lot better along the way as well and you'll come out of this process a much more developed person and a much more skilled individual and it's it's an amazing journey and if you make it through you should be very proud of yourself because many people want to study medicine but it's not for everyone it's not that easy so uh, best of luck if you're considering applying to medical school i hope this video was helpful i hope it gave you good insights on how, what to do to get into medical school and um, every all the steps along the process and how to basically complete them in the best way possible and do check out all the videos i linked throughout to go into more detail and yeah that's pretty much it for this video and i'll see you in the next one so bye